Okay. So what we talked about most of yesterday were the fine details of the data that we collect when we do each type of inventory. And we could basically go on for a very long time if we had an entomologist and if we had an ichthyologist or a, a malacologist. Each one of those groups is going to be doing something particular, something that's individual. But I think you've already seen that there are some repeat themes, okay? And so, for example, the herpetologists take pictures. Well, guess what? So do the ornithologists and so do the botanists. Okay, so the herpetologists also think that they take pictures of things that are more interesting than the ornithologists or the botanists, and I half agree with them. But rather than create disciplinary boundaries, I won't go further down that line. Um, so yeah, it's, it's useful and interesting to go group by group. And particularly for those of you who are herpetologists, you've now heard two very accomplished herpetologists describing their plan of action. And you're gonna see it next week, okay? But, this morning is more about what are the, the cross-cutting pieces of information. Essentially the information where I don't care if you're a malacologist or an entomologist or a herpetologist or an ichthyologist. These are things that in some form or in some sense you should be recording. And the degree to which we all do it the same way means that we will do it better and we'll be better able to connect across different research efforts, okay? So what I wanna start with right now is the idea of a daily list, okay? Now think about it. You go out to do your herping and you catch these 30 frogs and these 20 lizards and these two snakes. But maybe you saw a couple of snakes that got away, and you certainly will. So if we don't find a way to capture that information very uniformly and very repeatably, we will lose that information, okay? Now, Jacob showed you yesterday for birds, and there was, there was some uh, indication of, of parallels for, for herps. Um, the idea of uploading those data into a, um, a common use database. And that's great, because it means you don't have to be, or your institution doesn't have to be maintaining a server. But we wanna talk about how we capture those data along the way, when you're out in the field. And clearly, you know, you need some sort of field notebook and you're jotting down and you, you do it in whatever form works for you. But a very crucial thing is to capture that information and essentially synthesize it while it's still fresh in your mind. And I've heard a thousand times people saying, oh, I'll, I'll transcribe my field notes as soon as I get back. So guys, how often have you done that? Yeah. You, right. And there are two reasons. One is you get busy when you get back, right? There's always between family and work and blah, 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 all the stuff that you didn't do in that week or that month that you were out. But also, you know, at the end of a day, you can pretty much remember what happened that day. I think if you go beyond one day, it's hopeless. You will lose information. So. Let's talk about a daily list. And this can be adapted for any taxonomic group. The typical and classic format for field notes might look like this. This is actually an image of the field notes of Edward Goldman, who was a US Fish and Wildlife Service biologist in the late 1800s. And Goldman and another Fish and Wildlife Service uh, biologist named Nelson, they traveled around Mexico for 20 some years. 
and collected just like this across the country. It's a fabulous storehouse of specimens. Um, so this is some, I was really pleased to find some of his field notes. But a little bit hard to read, a little bit hard to, to extract data from. So we can probably do better than this if our object is to pull quantitative data out of these, these, uh, these experiences that we have. And the main thing is keep it simple. It's a cumulative record divided by some measure of effort for each and every species that you have observed, recorded, uh, documented in some sense, okay? Daily is the usual measure of effort, okay? Usually, at least with, with vertebrates and, and plants, usually we don't go out and do all of our sampling in a day. But you could imagine maybe you're doing soil sampling where you go out, you dig 50 soil samples, and you go home, okay? Anyhow, usually it will be daily. And you may wish to do different daily lists by different types of um, sampling. So for example, the herpers might have a pitfall daily list and a diurnal herping daily list and a nocturnal her da herping daily list. And that will allow somewhat better analysis and it's not that hard to do. I mean, when we talk about daily lists, it's basically this. So you're making each day, just on a page in your field notebook, you say, okay, on day one, I saw this species and this species. Okay, and so your daily list at the end of day one has two lines in it. The second day you go out and you see this first species, Aphylacum acerolescens, you see it again. But you also see three new species on the list. And so you add these three species to your list. And the third day you go out and you see two new species and you also repeat, detect two species. Okay, so this is one page in your notebook. Now, if you're doing plants, there may be numbers that are too high. And so Moses gave you an option where you have your plot data and you don't need to repeat that in your daily list. Instead, what you can do is just keep a list of additional records. And that's fine. Herps, you guys here are what? 50 species max? Um, yeah, we'll probably see about 40, 50 species in crop. Okay. So birds might be in, in between plants and herps here. We'll, you know, if we do this well, we'll be 100, 150, 200 species. And that can take a, time, a bit of time. And I remember my first tropical expedition, which was to the Southwest Amazon in 1986, we, the ending list was 460 species. That took a long time to do the daily list. But those data were fabulous. So this is really something that you should just make part of your day. Uh, unfortunately, we were supposed to do this yesterday and I had a joke in here for Mark because this is a species that is believed extinct and there was one record of it eight years ago, 10 years ago, and then it was never seen again. And so Mark would have enjoyed the one there followed by all zeros. Anyhow, he missed it. So rules about daily lists. You have to do it every day. You know, every so often something will happen, you know, a rainstorm or something like that, and you don't do it, and then you're in this terrible position of, did I see that yesterday or did I see that today? So it's much better to find time to do it at the end of every day. I've been in situations where it's pouring rain, camp fell apart, but each of us was hiding out in his sleeping tent. And so we would do the daily list by shouting amongst tents. Did anybody see that level? Um, it should be at the end of the day. Uh, you should not leave 
any anybody to check with for tomorrow you know oh you know Kate's not here we'll have to track her down tomorrow find a way to do it at the end of the day so that everybody's information gets in some species may not be identified or identifiable but you can certainly do you know Agamia species A or you can do you know the red-headed seed, seed eater thing and you can change those and figure those out later particularly if you've obtained specimens so this is a way of complementing the specimens we don't get specimens of everything that's one thing it it moves you further towards the inventory we would love to have specimens of everything but we never do so this complements us towards that inventory that's one thing and then the other thing is this gives you information about abundance or about prevalence it gives you some level of information about the species and its characteristics in that place and third thing is as you will see tomorrow and the next day these data no just tomorrow these data are crucial to the inventory statistics that we'll be developing. Without these data, you can't do it. 